have always been associated with fairies, elves, and elemental spirits, particularly those of the woodlands. It has been written about in India, Africa, China, Mesopotamia, Babylon, and early Christianity, and is widely found in modern stories and lore. The physical description of the unicorns varies from culture to culture. The European description is most familiar because of ancient tapestries and tales. It is said that a unicorn has the head and body of a horse, the hind legs of a stag, the tail of a lion and a long spiral twisted horn in the center of its forehead. It also has cloven hooves. It is a pure white with blue eyes. The horn is a pale ivory tint, untamed with very strong elemental powers. The unicorn is a symbol of transformation through destruction or the breaking down of certain events or traits so that a new life and cycle can begin. The apple tree is its home and thus an apple blossom fragrance can be used in meditation to help draw the unicorn out into the open. Siddhar is also good as the unicorn is known to keep its treasures in a Siddhar box. Submissiveness, purity of heart and gentle loving innocence draw unicorns out into the open. The search for the unicorn can be likened to the quest for the Holy Grail. Only the strongest and the most pure will achieve it. A unicorn is capable of taking you on dimensional journeys through time and space to show you what is needed to make positive changes in your physical and spiritual life. The unicorn holds the knowledge and treasures of alchemy. It can stimulate healing and the unicorn can purify water simply through its presence. More than anything else, an encounter with the unicorn will free the imagination and when the imagination is truly free, the entire fairy realm is opened wide. The descending passageway being narrow, the working conditions might have been drastic. And keeping this constant slope angle requires specific tools to keep this same and precise geometry. You would need tools that could allow this throughout the whole building process. Feat number four. They piled up more than two million stones of different shapes and sizes, which is much harder than with similar blocks. Each block is as heavy as a sedan, and the precision of the whole building matches modern day standards. The upper chamber is perfectly horizontal and vertical, and its precision overshadows modern tolerances. Although a third of an inch off would have gone unnoticed, the construction is precise to a fiftieth of an inch. Regarding the building's precision, I talked to one of the best structure engineers on earth, Chris Wise. To build things so accurately, such a long time ago is, is, I mean, it's frankly amazing. And even now, I think most people would say it would be too difficult for, you know, for most builders to, to get anything like that accurate. 
The Great Pyramid has stayed intact through at least three major earthquakes, the last of which flattened Cairo in the 13th century. Nonetheless, everything is in place, and we've seen that nothing was moved inside. Feed number five. They have oriented the Great Pyramid so precisely that it's pointing north within five one hundredths of a degree. This precision has only been matched very recently. And to put things in context, in the 17th century, using the same methods, we were five times less precise. Feat number six. Something no construction theory mentions is that the Great Pyramid actually has eight sides, since each one is slightly bent, as you can see on this picture. Which complicates the structure, since no two of those blocks are alike. To keep this eight-sided base on the four sides of the edifice during the construction, with an accuracy down to the centimeter, even down to the millimeter, would be very difficult, extremely difficult. And I think that if today we wanted to build the same structure using modern measuring and control devices, the techniques available today, we would definitely be in trouble. Feat number seven. The Great Pyramid is supposed to have been built in 20 years. A quick calculation gives an idea of what that means construction-wise. For a 12-hour shift, 365 days a year, with at least two million stone blocks, that would mean one quarried, carved, lifted, and fitted block every two and a half minutes. Feat number eight. Since the builders came before the existence of wheels, iron, or steel, it was with copper chisels, stone mallets, hemp ropes, and a great deal of cleverness that they'd have built the last of the world's seven wonders, and the only one visible today. Let's sum up. About 47 centuries ago, when the rest of the planet is on the loose, clad in animal skins, masons were building the Great Pyramid of Giza. One limestone hillock raised to the ground, a 6,000 hectare paving over a surface which is tantamount to six football fields, over two million of piled up blocks for an estimated mass of 6.2 million tons, a 42-story building's height, a narrow 300 feet long passageway utterly straight, driven through the rocks and running through the pyramid's body. 130 granite slabs lifted up to 210 feet and fitted to a 50th of an inch. Eight sides instead of four. An outstanding earthquake-proof structure, a modern delight precision in the fitting, a modern delight precision in the orientation, and the whole thing in only 20 years with this. Put this way, facts are confusing. But that's what we need to keep in mind when we puzzle over the Great Pyramid. Thanks to this contradiction, I decided to dig this file, but I didn't know that it would take me 10 years to close it, and where it would lead me. Let's go back to square one, when I was still thinking that Egyptology theses were relying on actual and proven facts. I was so far out. So let's begin with the ancient empire, when the Great Pyramid was built. For Jean-Luc Lan, probably the most qualified Egyptologist on Earth, the dates of Egyptian history can only be certified from 680 BC, because that's when we managed to cross-check Egyptian archives with Roman and Greek ones. Before that, it gets murky. The differences could be give or take 200 years. Although we assume that the Egyptologist is overwhelmed by archives, this is true for some periods, but, but for others, like the ancient empire, somehow it's, it's a big question mark. And that's why finally your questions are ours. When it comes to the pyramid's construction, we have a lot of ideas, but no written account. Same for Cheops, whose pyramid is allegedly his tomb. We don't know for sure when nor how long his reign lasted. As for all Egyptian pharaohs, we don't have any proper historical text. To get how complex it is, picture yourself in front of this, working on blurry, sometimes conflicting chunks of steles and papyrus written in a difficult language, hundreds of thousands of years after the biggest building venture of mankind. Actually, the situation is pretty easy to sum up. Egyptologists are far from agreement, and all that happened in an empirical way, if you like, 
with okay. additions, subtractions. The thing is, when it comes to the Great Pyramid, we're left with assumptions. And up to this day, nothing has been proven yet. So I naturally turned to geologists, stone-cutting specialists, experienced engineers, architects, and big projects leaders to try to understand. For instance, here are, among others, two modern building sites, which will help us to grasp the work scope of the Great Pyramid. In the 60s, 22 countries, funded by 50 nations, powering the leading-edge technology, raised the Abu Simbel Temple to keep it from being floated by the Aswan Dam's water. In spite of cranes and trucks, it took five years to quarry and rebuild this temple made of 2,200 blocks, the heaviest ones weighing 30 tons. 2,200 blocks, five years. 2 million blocks, 20 years, without cranes or trucks. The second site is a former clay quarry, currently filled with rubbles. The pit's volume is a bit smaller than the Great Pyramids. Do you know how long it took to fill up that pit? 12 years, with one rubble truck every three minutes, which means 80 rubble trucks each business day, only to carry and dump rubbles in the pit. We're not talking size nor construction. Here's Jean-Pierre Martin's take on the construction of the Great Pyramid. He headed one of the biggest French construction sites, the Mill of Viaduct. Either you believe in God and in aliens, or you may imagine any kind of setup, or, like me, you want to keep it down to earth, believing only in men and asking yourself how he did it. I have no clue. I couldn't do it, that's for sure. It would be so much easier to extend the construction span of the Great Pyramid. The building of the Teotihuacan Pyramid in Mexico, half as tall, lasted 150 years. Why do Egyptologists stick to this silly 20-year period of time? Because if they acknowledge a span outlasting Kip's reign, the tomb alibi would collapse, and that's undisputable. Here's the mainstream stand. For a long time, there was some hearsay, not from Egyptologists, I'd like to stress, but there was some hearsay alleging that pyramids could have had another function. That is unthinkable. If it wasn't Kiop's tomb, what could it be? Challenging this first taboo with this simple question would make you feel, in the eyes of an Egyptologist, like a pyramidiot, which translates into a loony. I have to tell you something. If it wasn't for a guide, an outstanding, tireless, persistent researcher, I would still be wandering around. He told me to check other sites as old as the Great Pyramid and others more ancient, and it turned out to be a precious tip. Everywhere I saw this, weird shaped blocks. Why those shapes? It's much easier to fit similar blocks as we do nowadays. You just have to lay them side by side without carving them. For me, this remains a complete mystery. Also given that they've been set. Without cement, these are rough stones laid side by side. This is breathtaking. These are tremendous feats. A razor blade couldn't penetrate between two blocks. We can even spot some rounded blocks, and the upper stone fits perfectly the curve, which is very hard with stones as heavy as 20 pickup trucks. Heavy blocks like that weren't put back in place any time recently. I'm, I'm gonna check on the YouTube drama. Let me see what Scarce just uploaded. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Scarce here, and today...